Hey guys, welcome to the Outjeeping YouTube channel. My name is Austin, and today we're going to be replacing the power cables on my 2007 Dodge Ram 1500 that has a 4.7 V8 engine. All right, so looking underneath the engine bay of my 2007 Ram, um, as you can see, we got all the power cables basically over here on the driver's side. There's really nothing much over on the passenger side, but the uh, reason why I'm replacing all the cables here today is because I encountered an issue actually with the battery terminal clamps, and from the factory, they came with these uh, cheap kind of sheet metal design ones on both the positive and negative terminal, and over time, uh, they actually develop cracks in them, and they no longer hold their tension around the post on the battery. Um, and it actually happened on both the negative and positive post on here. And it actually left me a couple times with a no start issue because it's not making full contact with that battery post and it's not getting enough amps over to the starter, um, even though all the other electronics work on the truck. But by cranking over the engine, it's drawing a lot more amps. And with all the corrosion and not having enough contact on the battery post, it's not able to transfer all those amps through. I could have went right ahead and replaced with a cheap battery terminal that you can just get at any auto parts store, but I actually went ahead and contacted Jeep Cables and had a full set of cables uh, made for this. Um, since I'm going in here and replacing the terminals anyway, might as well just go and replace the cables as well. So let's go take a look at the new cables and see how they compare to the old ones over here. All right, so here are all the cables that we're going to be replacing on the truck today. Um, I went ahead and got all four gauge wire for all of my uh, wires that we're going to be replacing. So starting off, we got our ground to the fender, we got our ground to the frame, and then we got our ground over to the engine block. And then along with that, we got our power cable from our alternator. And then between the alternator and basically back to the battery, you want to have a fuse on the factory wires. They actually have a built inline fuse um, that's kind of hidden underneath some sheathing. Um, but this right here replaces that. So you actually have a physical fuse you can unbolt and install whatever amp uh, fuse you want to put in there. Um, and then we also have a short cable from the fuse block to the uh, PDC, which is our power distribution center, which is our fuse box, which basically has our main positive post on there. Um, then we also have our starter wire. Then we got another wire from our battery terminal all the way over to that power distribution center. Now, along with that, we also got some military grade terminals right here. These things are pretty beefy. Um, they're not gonna really crack as easy as the old ones did. And with these, they got some uh, bigger bolts in the back that we can easily add some accessories if we so choose to. So if you have a Dodge Ram third gen with the 3.7 or 4.7 engine, this is pretty much going to be identical. With the 3.7 the 4.7, they're very uh, similar engines, except one has uh, two less cylinders, but a lot of the components are very similar on that, so the cables on there are going to be the same as well. The only thing that we don't have is actually a ground strap, and that's actually located on the back of the engine. And it's a strap that basically ties each cylinder head together, and then it also goes into the firewall. That one we're not going to be replacing today um, since it is a high heat area there's um exhaust that goes around there having a wire like this would just easily melt the insulation off of it so we're just going to keep that ground strap on the back there um, i also actually replaced that when i did the head gaskets on this last summer so i shouldn't have to worry about that but if you are looking for that ground strap i'll put a link in the description below on where you can find it so i'd like to thank jeep cables for sending these out to me um, a lot of people think that jeep cables they only make cables for jeeps and stuff uh, but paul over at jeep cables is actually making it for more vehicles now he's got toyotas and now he's got dodge rams so if you want some cables made up for a different vehicle that may not be listed on his website you can contact paul at jeep cables give him all the measurements that you need and he can make a custom cable pack for you so make sure you check out jeepcables.com if you're interested in getting yourself some custom jeep cables all right, so now that we took a look at the new stuff, let's go back to the engine bay and start removing our old cables. All right, so to give a quick overview on the location of all the cables that we're going to be replacing, um, like I said earlier, it's all mostly going to be over here on the driver's side. So starting over here on the negative terminal, we got our negative cable that comes off the terminal and going over to the fender, so that's going to be our shorter black wire. We also have two other ground cables heading down. One is going to go to our frame, and the other one's going to go to our engine block. Now over here on the positive terminal, we got one wire that goes all the way down to the starter. We got one that goes all the way over here to our PDC, which is our power distribution center. And basically inside here, we have our fuse box. 
And if you notice right here, we got a green wire. This is actually our fusible link right here. It's only about four inches long. But that's basically our fusible link that comes from the alternator over here to the PDC. And then this wire extends into a red wire, which goes down and back up over here to the PDC. Now, since we have a different fuse setup and we're not gonna be using this inline fuse right here, um, I already measured it out and I'm actually gonna be mounting our fuse on the side of the fuse box over here. So I'm just gonna drill a couple holes uh, put some nuts on the back side and we can mount it down over here. We got our shorter wire that's gonna link up into our post over here on the PDC and then our other longer wire that goes over here over to the alternator. But as you can see, most of our wires over here in this plastic wire loom, um, it tees off in a couple spots here and then down here. It might be hard to see, but I already started taking off some of the uh, electrical tape around there when I was actually making measurements uh, for Paula Jeep cables. So we're gonna have to take some of that off and then we're just gonna have to reinstall it when we have our new cables on there. But some of you Dodge guys might already notice, um, there's actually a lot of room over here. Normally you wouldn't have this much room, um, but this vehicle was in a deer collision back in October and it actually broke the AC condenser. I still haven't replaced it with a proper one yet, so I currently don't have anything right here, which is actually going to make it a lot easier to replace some of these cables and it's better for filming purposes. So I'm going to start off by removing these old battery terminals over here. I'm going to start over here on the positive side. We got a 10 millimeter nut on here, so we're just going to back that off and remove it from the battery. And this bolt right here is a little bit bigger because I actually replaced it since the previous one broke. So I'm just going to take this one off as well. Now over here on the driver's side inner fender, we got a 10 millimeter bolt going in where our ground cable uh, to the battery terminal is, so we're gonna take that off as well. And for now, I'm just gonna put the bolt back into its place, so that way I don't lose it. There is also another ground that utilizes this bolt right here as well, so make sure you attach that when we put it on our new cable. All right, so now I'm gonna work on getting the rest of the electrical tape that's around this wire loom on the cables here, and then we can remove the wire loom. That way it should expose our cables a little bit more, and then we can finish up on removing the cables. All right, so with some of that wire loom off, we can start on disconnecting over here on the PDC. We got our alternator wire, and we also have our wire that goes to the positive side of the battery. And over here, it's just gonna be a 13 millimeter nut. So we can slide these two cables off, and then I'm just gonna put the uh, nut back on here so I don't lose it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the air box that's on top of the engine right here. This way it's gonna give us a lot easier access to the uh, wire that goes on top of the alternator. That way we can fit a wrench in there and get it off. So I'm gonna start over here on removing this boot and start it by removing this hose clamp. And then on the back of the air box, there is also a uh, sensor that's plugged in. So we're just gonna pinch on that and unplug it for now. And then lastly on this side, we have a 10 millimeter bolt that's gonna be directly below uh, this intake right here. So we're gonna, gonna zip that out. And then on the driver's side, we have another 10 millimeter bolt right over here. Now we should be able to lift up on our air box and then pull straight out. All right, so for that alternator wire that came off the PDC that we removed earlier, as you can see, it comes up here and connects to the top of the alternator. Um, I just left this loom on here for now. Um, we can leave that until we uh, actually get this removed. It'll be a lot easier. Um, but to remove this from the alternator, we got a plastic clip over here that kind of protects the terminal. We're just gonna pinch on either side and then just kind of back it off. Then on top here, we have a 13 millimeter nut and we can go and remove that. All right, so we still can't remove the wire entirely, um, the one that goes to the alternator to the PC, um, even though we do have both the ends off. Um, the reason being is because the uh, terminals that they use on the end, they kind of splice both the wires in. So this uh, alternator splices with the uh, wire that goes back over here to the positive side of the battery. 
and that one is actually spliced into the wire that goes all the way down to the starter. So the last thing we have to do to remove all of our power cables is to remove the cable that's all the way down on the starter. So let's go do that. So before we go underneath the truck and remove that main power cable to the starter, um, one thing I would like to note is that there are some thinner wires over here that actually run with that starter wire. Um, and you'll notice that there's actually a total of five wires. Um, I figured out that these four wires right here, they're actually for the four wheel drive actuator. That's where it seems like it's going, but basically it ties into that wire loom for about a foot. And then it also exits that wire loom and goes off in a different direction. So when you're taking off the wire loom, just take note of that. I might just put some uh, new wire loom on this later and uh, have it go separate um, than the wire loom from the starter cable um, because it's kind of pointless just tying up for about a foot. And then along with this yellow wire, this is actually our ignition wire that goes to the starter as well. So this one's actually going to run all the way to the starter with that loom and that uh, starter cable. So this one's going to be all the way down there and we'll see that down by the starter. All right, so looking on the driver's side of the engine right here, we have our starter. We got our main cable going over here into a terminal. And then we also have this yellow ignition wire that plugs in right here. I'm actually going to unplug both of them. That way we can feed it up through the engine bay. And that way we can uh, rewrap our ignition wire to our new positive cable. So to take off this ignition wire, basically just got to push down on this connector and pull it straight out just like that. And now for the starter wire, we just got a 13 millimeter nut over here that we need to back off. All right, so now we should be able to pull on our starter cable. Just take note of how it's routed around the uh, steering shaft, because that's where our new wire is going to go into. All right, so that is that. I'm gonna finish up taking off the rest of this electrical tape that uh, ties these two wires together. Another thing to keep in mind is that with these little wires, uh, many places along the starter cable, they actually wrap some electrical tape around the uh, main cable and this little wire right here just to keep everything tied in. So you might not see that with a wire loom on top, so make sure you know that. All right, so with that finally separate, we should be able to take all of our positive uh, power cables out at once. And there we have it. All right, so the last two wires that we have to remove are gonna be our two ground cables, one going to our engine block and one going over to our frame. It's actually attached right here to our axle breather tube. So it looks like we just got a clip to unpop there. Then there's some areas where it's electrical taped up. And then we also have a Christmas tree uh, hook that has a zip tie around it to kind of help uh, hold the cable in place. Um, there's a couple of mounts over there where the uh, cable for the engine block goes. So we're just gonna have to take those off um, unfortunately, I don't have replacements exactly like that, but that's fine. We'll just uh, replace it with a normal zip tie uh, when we put the new cables on. All right, so now for our frame ground, we have a bolt over here on the driver's side frame. As you can see, it's down there. That's going to be a 10 millimeter. Since it is a little bit rusty down there, I'm going to take some heat on that bolt and hopefully uh, break that rust bond free because um, I really don't want to break that and have to uh, tap a new hole. So I'm going to heat it up with a map torch. I can easily access it inside the uh, driver's side wheel well. All right, so after a good five minutes of going back and forth with that bolt, I finally got it out and managed to not snap it. So now our ground cable that goes down to our frame is free. Now we can worry about the last cable that goes over to the engine block. All right, so for our last ground cable, it's gonna be the one that goes to the side of the engine on the driver's side, and it's actually pretty hard to get at. You can't really get underneath because the cross member and the front axle are in the way, and the only way that you can get at it is from the top, and it's really hard to see. So as you can see, our ground cable comes up and right there, it's kind of hard to see since it's dark in here, but that's going to be a 15 millimeter bolt going to the side of the block. So we're going to remove that. All right, so now we should be able to take the uh, ground cables and remove them from the truck. There we go. All right, so now that all the old cables are removed from the truck, we can go and start installing the new stuff. But first, one thing I did off camera is all the uh, little exposed wires that kind of share the wire loom with the cables. I went and made a separate wire loom for those wires only. Um, so I just got a quarter inch extension basically that goes from uh, this main plug over here. Then we got those four wires that go off to the front axle. And then I have some eighth inch loom over here. 
and this one actually goes all the way with the starter cable going down to the starter and while I was at it I just put a new spade connector on there as well since the old one kind of looked a little corroded and uh, the normal spade connector works fine for this I already tested it down on the starter and it all plugs in fine so basically when we install our new cables I'm not really going to be putting any uh, wire loom on there everything should be fine as long as nothing is rubbing on anything that way it shouldn't chafe so when we install our wires you just want to make sure that nothing is going to rub on anything and to do that we can zip tie it out of the way um, so that way everything stays firmly in place so another thing that I'm going to do before I start putting the new cables in is install the uh, fuse block that's right here that's going to be replacing our fusible link on our alternator and location I decided that I'm going to mount this is actually on the side of the fuse box which is right here and you can actually get on the back side so um, I'm going to be putting a couple bolts through here and put some nuts on the back side and tighten it up. There is four holes on this fuse block, um, but I'm just going to utilize two. That should be strong enough. But to get on the back side of this uh, fuse box, basically what we're going to do is there's uh, two little clips on the top side. You want to push those in on both sides and then our whole fuse box actually comes out like this. Um, so this little plastic piece right here that we're going to be bolting to is not actually going into the fuse box so we don't have to worry about water or damaging any possible other wires. Um, but basically we can just move this out of the way, drill a couple holes, bolt on our fuse box and pop this back down and then we should be good to go. All right, so with those bolts snugged up, we can take our fuse box and snap it back into its place. And there is plenty of clearance in here in case you're wondering, nothing's touching any connectors or wires. You just gotta loop the wires around. All right, so now I'm gonna start by putting some of the new cables onto this fusible link right here. I'm gonna start with the shorter one. And by the way, all the uh, cables from gcables.com, they're labeled at the end, so it's hard to mess up on where everything goes. So this one says fuse, and the other one over here says PDC. So this is going to go to our fuse block, and then to our uh, power distribution center right here. Also off camera, I went ahead and just took a wire brush to this uh, PDC right here, clean up any uh, surface oxidation, and I also did that on the battery terminals as well, so everything is nice and clean and has a good connection. So with the shorter link, um, the side that has the boot, that's going to be our fuse end. And I just have one washer on here right now. I'm going to put our uh, cable over there. Just kind of leave that hanging on there. And then put the other end on the PDC. And I'm just going to uh, lightly put this nut on right now. I'm not going to tighten it up because we still have another cable to put on. Now on the other post of the fuse, we got a, uh, another cable. This is gonna be our cable that goes straight to the alternator. So we got our boot over here, and that's gonna be going towards the uh, fuse side. So once I got both cables on either end of the fuse, I'm gonna put another washer on there. And now I'm gonna stick our 150 amp fuse into place. And then we got two lock washers to go over it, and then our two nuts. All right, so now we can begin tying up these two nuts. You just wanna make sure that the uh, cable's in a nice area where it's nice and uh, comfortable. You don't want anything kind of kinked or rubbing on anything else. So I've just got this uh, little cable over here that goes to the PDC. That's gonna be in that position right there. And then over here by the alternator, I'm just gonna have a slight angle upward because um, that's kind of the direction where our cable's gonna lead to. And these nuts are gonna be a 9 16 And now we can slip our rubber boots over our terminal posts. And that'll keep it nice and protected. All right, so for the rest of the alternator cable, um, one thing I did transfer from the old cable is this little plastic connector right here. Um, so basically that just slides off the end and then once we attach this to the alternator, this will all snap down and cover this end up so it's not exposed. Um, another thing I transferred was this uh, wire loom right here. Unfortunately, I don't have this size brand new, so I can't coat the entire wire. Um, that's fine, but uh, with this uh, foot and a half or so that's uh, on the end here, um, where the high heat area is on the engine, it should protect this wire enough, um, so that way we shouldn't have to worry about any uh, wires getting too hot. 
So as you can see, we do have a little bit of slack over here. Um, that's because with the old wire, it was kind of going uh, up here to a T-joint, then down there to a T-joint, then back up over here. So that's why you're gonna have that little extra slack over here at the end. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to uh, bolt this onto the alternator. Um, I went already ahead and uh, took a wire wheel and cleaned up this uh, terminal a little bit, so that way we have good connection. And then we just got this 13 millimeter nut on the top. All right, so now since a lot of these cables, they actually had these type of connectors kind of holding them down. It's basically, it's like a Christmas tree connector um, coming off over here to a zip tie where the cable is wrapped around. And you can't really reuse these um, since obviously we have to take off the old cables. Um, so you can either buy new ones of these or you can just kind of zip tie them in place and just make sure that they can't chafe against anything sharp uh, once you have it zip tied down. So I'm gonna do that uh, throughout the uh, install process here and just install some zip ties. All right, so the next cable we're gonna install is our positive cable that goes from the PDC all the way up to the positive terminal on the battery. So that's gonna be this guy right here. It's labeled PDC at this end. So we're gonna attach it to uh, this uh, post right here by the fuse box. And then we're gonna route our cable all the way up to the positive side by the battery. And then I just have this cable going straight down and I'm going to tighten up this nut and that's going to be a 13 millimeter. And then we can route this up over to the far side of the battery. And then I'm just going to put one zip tie in place over here because we're pretty much done with the positive wires over here. I'm not going to finish up um, all the zip ties on it until we get the rest of the wires in. All right, so now we got our last power wire that's in the kit, and this is our wire that goes down to our starter all the way up to the positive terminal on the battery. And as you can see right here, I just put a few zip ties um, along the cable with this uh, little ignition wire that goes down to the starter as well. So that way it's gonna be easier feeding this down, and then it's already attached um, in the area where it's kind of hard to get to. So I'm gonna route this down to the starter. Um, basically, you just kind of weave it down exactly where the uh, old cable was. Um, so basically I have to go on the left side of the steering shaft um, and then I should be able to attach it down there and then we'll come up on the top side and we'll get this all zip tied in place so that way it can't move. All right, so now that we got our wires down here by the starter, I'm gonna go and first attach our cable. So take off our nut. What I'm actually gonna do is kind of bend the tab on the end of the terminal here a little bit. So that way it doesn't go out at a 90 degree angle and kind of goes in the direction that we want it to. So with that bent slightly, we can put it up here. Thread on our nut. And then tighten it down with a 13 millimeter. And then we can take our ignition wire and plug it into place. So to help keep this cable from uh, jingling around a little bit, I'm just gonna run a zip tie around this transmission shift cable. That way it should help kind of keep it in place. All right, so that's pretty much all there is for down here by the starter. All right, so now we can install our ground cable that goes to the frame all the way up to the negative side of the terminal. Um, I already went ahead and just took a flap this to the frame right where that uh, terminal for the cable goes because it was all rusty. I want a nice clean connection. I'm also putting a brand new bolt on there since the other one was rusted up. So we got our cable, this side says body frame. And we're just gonna set that down right in there and then I'm going to attach it from inside the wheel well. And now on the top side for this cable, we're gonna clip it back into the axle breather uh, little clip right here. And since this is a thicker gauge cable, it doesn't really want to clip into place, so I'll just take a zip tie and zip tie these two together. Now I'll wait till we get the uh, ground cable that goes to the engine block before I zip tie this into place up here. All right, so I took care of that ground cable that goes to the engine block. I couldn't really film in there getting onto the uh, side of the engine block. I can't even really see for myself, so I apologize for that. Um, but I got it coming up here and running to the terminals. So we got our two ground cables, one from our frame and one from our engine block going up here. 
And now our last cable is our little ground cable over here. And this is gonna go from our negative side and our battery all the way over here to the fender. Now I screwed up a little bit on giving the measurements to uh, Paula Jeep cables. Um, I actually had this a little bit too long, so it's gonna be actually kind of weird uh, kind of putting this in here and it's gonna be uh, kind of rubbing on this. So I figured I might be able to utilize another bolt in the fender, which is actually holding in the battery tray right here. Um, so I actually can do that and kind of loop it around on this side and that should work for now until I get a shorter cable. So I'm gonna get this uh, little fender cable bolted onto the fender right here and then we can get all of our cables bolted to our terminal clamps. All right, so I got this small fender ground right here and I got that bolted over here in the corner. It's kind of hard to see where the camera's at, but I had to remove the battery to fully get this bolt out to be able to slip on the uh, ground and I tightened that up and now this should fit on here nicely without any weird angles um, going on this ground cable. So I'm gonna start hooking up the uh, cables to the battery terminals. Um, I'm gonna start over here on the positive side. So we got our two cables, one going down to the starter and one going to the PDC. Then we can take our new battery terminal clamp and uh, we can take off one of the nuts over here. And these are stamped uh, for whichever uh, side you're using. So P for positive. Then I can slide on one cable, then the other and then just loosely attach this until we get the terminal on the battery. And before I put the clamp on there, I'm just gonna take some dielectric grease and put a very thin layer on these terminals. That way it helps reduce some of the corrosion. We can take our clamp, set it on there. And uh, I'm gonna open this up all the way so that way this uh, clamp can stretch out over the terminal post. Now I'm going to tap this down until it's flush to the top of the battery. Now once it's down all the way, I'll tighten up this nut over here so it clamps onto the post and it's going to be a half inch. You don't want to go crazy tight, but just tight enough so that way it can't wiggle on there. Now I'm going to tighten up our cables on the back of our terminal and it's going to be a 9 16 All right, so that's pretty much it for the positive side. Now we can move over here to the grounds. So I'll start off by, again, sliding on our cables. Then we can tighten up our clamp. and then tighten up our cables. All right, so now that we have our cables 100% installed, the only thing we have to do is put our air box back on top of the engine, and then I'm gonna button up all the extra wire, zip tie it, and make it all look pretty, so that way uh, no wires to go around while you're going down the road, and that way you don't have any chafing or any electrical issues in the future. All right, guys, take a look at that. Everything is all finished up, and I got all the cables all nice and tight. I think it's a lot tighter than what the uh, factory wires were. They were just kind of flopping around, but we got everything kind of zip tied together. Nothing's going to be chafing against each other. Um, I got plenty of clearance between that uh, exhaust manifold and the uh, steering shaft for the starter wire going all the way down. So everything is looking really nice. Now, the last thing we got to do is just put on that air box on top of the engine, and then we can wrap this project up. guys that's gonna be a wrap for today's video everything went really smoothly um, the only issue I had was just with that fender cable I had to reroute it differently since it was so short that was on my part because I uh, gave an incorrect measurement but overall I'm very happy I won't have any uh, no start issues anymore everything's very beefy and high quality with the ends and everything um, so a big thanks to Paul at Jeep Cables for sending these out and if you guys want to get yourself some own cables for either your Jeep Toyota or now Dodge or if you want some custom cables Check out jeepcables.com and I got a link for that in the description below. If you guys want to help support the channel, I got some out jeeping decals that you guys can purchase. I'll put a link in the description below as well so you guys can find those. But if you guys found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the out jeeping YouTube channel to help keep these videos coming. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. 
Thanks again for watching and we'll see you guys next time.